Massachusetts, Mark from the United States. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, Mark from the States. How are we doing today? I am doing fantastic. I hope you are as well. Thank you so much for coming. Come sit on this big fake couch. Today, uh, I'm excited. New channel. Uh, we get to watch. Uh, it's on the city of Norwich. Norwich. Hope I'm saying I know it's my American tongue wants to just say Norwich. I know that's not right. I think it's just Norwich. I think. Um, Mike from Living Walks is the channel. It, uh, please go and support his channel. It's very important that you do. The link to his channel and to this video that we're going to watch today is going to be in the description. Um, please go support. You know it's important that we uh, help the original content creators. Uh, just go and like and subscribe and, and, and get lost on his channel. I encourage you to do so. I'm excited to see this today. I don't know really anything about this about this city. So I'm excited to uh, take a look. Um, it's going to be like a walking narration tour, which are really cool. And uh, so, uh, as you can see, I'm excited. Plus, 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 uh, I've talked to Mike and he is giving me his blessing to watch this. You know, I'm trying hard to just watch uh, videos of people who have given me the okay to, to learn from their videos with all of you. And uh, so it's, it, I, I'm really blessed that um, him and so many others have uh, been so gracious to allow me to do this. So I am so fired up. So, uh, it's a long one. So it's probably going to be two parts. Um, probably get about halfway through today and then uh, the other half tomorrow, hopefully. Work has been absolutely nuts. So I've just really been leaving the house really early. And that's, as you know, when I do all these videos. So, um, update on my grandfather's uh, jacket. Um, I gotten some feedback from some of you so thank you uh, I really appreciate it um, and others have pointed me in certain directions to get some more information about the metals and or not so much the metals but the you know the collar pins and then and the wings and, and the bars and whatnot and some of the patches that are on the coat and the the, the inner lining and one of the things I forgot to show you is the, the awesome picture of the of the woman on the back. I don't know if you saw it when it was hanging up behind me, but um, <laughs> I dig it. I dig it. So thank you to all of you. Uh, so let's do it. Without further ado, let's uh, let's take a look at the city of Norwich. Eh, gosh, it's so hard not to want to pronounce the W, but I feel I don't I don't need to I, I kind of have a feeling Norwich it's the W is not I have to pretend like it's not there um, but this is what's great about my channel a lot of you are going to correct me and tell me how to say it because I want to learn how to pronounce it right so I love it so let's do this shall we that's Mike from Living Walks again hello hello my favorite land-based mammals Nah. We are in the lovely city of Norwich. Norwich. We are okay. starting in front of St. Gregory's. We're starting here, partly because of this coffee shop, Alchemista. So we discovered this uh, partly during the lockdown. Ah. If you remember those glorious days of the only coffee you could get was uh, outside. It's also got cocktails here, too. Had a takeaway coffee from here, sat outside, and it was a taste explosion. Absolutely fantastic coffee. What a cool. So, uh, how do I know? I'm sorry to already interrupt, but man, what a cool little area right here. Um, uh, I love that one. It's a beautiful day, <laughs> um, but it just, what a cool little area to get a coffee, or it did say cocktails. You know, I'm, I love me a cocktail, but uh, God, I'm going to really enjoy this. Okay. I'll try not to talk as much. <laughs> Yesterday, 
police report is as good as it was before. But Norwich too, it's about the third or fourth time been here. Really, it's just one of our absolute favorite towns in the UK. Hooper's surplus. Uh, the drawing room's in front of us. Uh, it was closed down last time we were here for refurbishment. The drawing room, so a little picture of a compass to the left there. Um, really, the name drawing room really refers to, in days gone past, it was tradition for uh, men and women to part once they've had a meal in the dining room. Men would stay in the dining room, the women would withdraw to the withdrawing room. Interesting. Hence, it became known as the drawing room. I love that stranger's coffee. That's awesome. However, I think they're using it more in terms of an architect's drawing uh, room. Yes. So let's head up Lower Gate Lane. Some American flags there. American been to Brighton. Deli. We've been around the lanes in Brighton. Chef Ron's Kitchen. American Deli, American Chefs. Interesting. And then you kind of know what to expect around here. There's lots of little lanes, all have that same feel. Independent coffee shops, boutiques. I love this. This is so cool. <laughs> games this table. place is really interesting. The games table. I'm going to rent a board game for a couple of hours. Sit there with a drink, some friends. It's a nice way to while away the day. So I love all and the shops. And behind us there, that was Pottergate. It's one of the oldest streets in the city. Pottergate, can you, can you imagine what possibly happened there? Well, that's right, so Potter, as in pottery. So it's the street where all the potters used to be. And the gate, now there wasn't a gate, so gate is an old Danish word for street. Gata, that's where it comes from. Potter's street. Wow, and you come out to that. That's gorgeous. Look at that. What a view. Pretty neat. Now, just over here, you can see the tops of the market. Uh, we're not going there yet. We're going to save that for later. We're going to pop down here and just past the Guild Hall on our right. So this Guild Hall was... Uh, wait for the bus to go. So the Guildhall was finished in 1413. Oh my gosh. One of the largest of its kind in the country. In fact, Norwich used to be uh, Britain's second biggest city. And so this was the town hall for a very long time. Uh, it was also a jail. Now, Christian Martyr, Thomas Bilney, he was kept here in the dungeon uh, until his fate was sealed. Now imagine, Christian Martyr, what would your fate be? People don't approve of your beliefs. Were you tied to a tree and uh, had your gonads tickled? <coughs> no, not at all. Were rude words hurled at you? No, as you see here, execution by burning at Lollard's pit. Uh, oh my god. Not gosh. a nice way to go. Let's head down this way. So we're in Norwich. But does Norwich get its name? It's its name from North Wick. Okay, so uh, a wick uh, actually meant port. So the River Wensum here, there was a port here. It's the North Port. I'm gonna show you this weird building here. Sig some papers. A weird old thing, isn't it? It's almost like each story was built in a different era. 
all the different types of columns that you can get. All the different brick as well. But also it's quite nice, it's next to Gerard's. So Gerard's probably is the largest and oldest sort of private company here in Norwich. You can see the- It's a department store. A little more busy. But what we often miss, I think, walking around the UK high streets, see the shops underneath, which are all pretty much there. But if you look up, oh, wow. you see the grandeur that once was. Let's have a little looky. It looks. So out of place. <laughs> Let's carry on down. We're on London Street at the moment. Oh. London Street, you wouldn't appreciate by looking at it now, but it was the UK's first pedestrianised street, High Street. The first what? I'm sorry. Street, High Street. I appreciate I by looking at it now. But it was the UK's first pedestrianised oh, pedestrian. street, High okay. Street. The architecture is just amazing. Each building, which is literally connecting <laughs> the next building, just different brick, different style. So cool. Got the ivy overhead. I'm gonna go head back down uh, Swan Lane a moment. I just want to take you up here a second. To show you the pub called The Wild Man. Love it. It's like you already knew my fascination with pubs. like someone sleeping there. I know that all too well. Hey, Greg's heard about that place. Book hive. And here we go. The wild man. So what's important about this? Well, it's kind of interesting really. So it gets its name from Peter the Wild Boy. Okay, so he was a feral child that was uh, found, I guess, out in the woods near Hanover. And uh, he made his way somehow to the UK and he was kept by King George I, really as a curiosity. As a pet. Anyway, <laughs> at some point, Peter found his way to Norwich where he was uh, picked up, he was arrested and he was kept American in the Bridewell, which is going to pass down here. So this is Bridewell Alley. Now at the moment, the Museum of Norwich is in the Bridewell, but obviously before at some point, it used to be a jail. Barber. I suppose having a wild feral Boy, his curiosity in the house is probably a little bit more interesting than having, you know, a terrapin. Museum of Norwich. Or a canary. 
Also, interestingly, so Norwich City football team is often referred to as the Canaries. Do you know why? I do. I know why. I do not, okay. Mike. So the reason was, so Norwich was very famous for wool, the wool industry. And I think in the 1500s, a lot of weavers came over from Holland and Belgium, and they brought with them their canaries, as you do. <laughs> as you do. And as they settled here, <laughs> they took up the hobby of breeding those canaries. In fact, uh, Norwich became quite famous for its canaries. So there we are, that's where the football club gets its name. Let's hack on over here. So we find ourselves in front of yet another uh, church that is not being used as a church. So St. Gregory's where we started, that's being used as uh, an antique shop. And the halls here, which used to be St. Andrew's, is now being used as uh, an events venue. Well, that would be pretty cool to have an event So we'll wander there. down here. So uh, in the Middle Ages, there were quite a lot of churches here, 58 in total. Dang. Uh, it's down to 31 now. and. Most of them, I guess, well, a lot of them anyway, aren't being used as churches anymore. It's an awesome building, though. Similar thing with pubs, actually. I think in um, the late 1800s, uh, census showed there was uh, 600 pubs in the town. Wow. I think recently now you're looking at probably 130. Why did they disappear? Uh, well, there was a new licensing act in 1904. Uh, World War II came along, along with uh, lots of bombing. And also there was slum clearance. So a lot of the slums went, and of course, other buildings too. A lot of pubs. Right, King Street didn't fare too well. Uh, they used to have 58. Uh, pubs on King Street. Uh, there's now one. It's in fact now called one. Uh, the last pub standing. Perfect. We're going to take a little detour through there in a minute, <sighs> but I'm just going to take you down to the river. Norwich Technical Institute on the right. Norwich University of the Arts. Big student town. And just across the bridge over there is the playhouse. We're not going to go there today. So churches, of course, played a big part in uh, medieval culture. Not only just because that's where all the power was, but also churches uh, provided hospitals and care. And Norwich has had its uh, fair share of uh, interesting outbreaks. There used to be uh, six leper hostels here. So yeah, we had leprosy in the UK. Norwich, I think in the past had uh, three bouts of the plague, which is all fun, isn't it really? 1579 killed a third of the population. Dang. Of course it recovered, as we do. Then again in the 1600s, 
And again, later in the 1600s, about sort of 1665. So you see this here, which is looks like the remainder of something. It's just the architecture of these older buildings are just uh, astonishing. <laughs> I can't even put it into words. It's just, I mean, I know to a lot of you, this is, you know, every day, but um, where I'm from, this is, you don't see stuff like this at all. It's just incredible. And it's just part of every day, you know, a lot of them being repurposed. I'm glad they are. You don't want them to just sit there and decay, you know. But uh, just incredible. This is wild. I love seeing everybody out walking around. It's the old ruins of an old oh. friary. So when the friars arrived in the 13th century, I suppose what's the difference between a friar and a monk? Uh, well, the friars would tend to go out. They'd be quite active and they'd go out and preach, whereas monks tend to stay at home and do monk-like things. Monk-like things. Let's head this way and we're going to go to Elm Hill. I've so been here known we are to at the top of things. Elm Hill. So Elm Hill, built in the Tudor period, so started back in the 1200s. But really, one of the... The only buildings that survives from that period is the one in front of us, okay, the Britain's Arms. Because in the 50, what, 1507, there was a big fire. Um, took out over 700 buildings in this area. So most of the buildings you see here, they go back maximum to like the 1500s. If you're wondering where Elm Hill gets its name, well, gets its name from the elm tree that used to be here. Uh, the one in front of us now, that's not an elm tree. Because uh, of the, the joy of a uh, Dutch elm disease, uh, it was removed. Oh. That's unfortunate. Just love the... But that is the where its name comes from. The road here, cobblestone. That. So you see over on the left it says Crown Court Yard and it says not adopted. Uh, what does not adopted mean? We're going to see that in a few other places. It simply means that it's an alleyway or road that simply hasn't been adopted by the local council, which means they go, whoa, it's nothing to do with me. Deal with it yourself. So they don't maintain it or anything. And it's not huh. as unusual as you think, because apparently in the UK, whenever an area's being developed, a new housing estate, all the streets and roads on it are not adopted until the whole thing is finished. It makes sense, really, doesn't it? The council is not responsible until it's finished. And then they come and put their little stamp on it, <laughs> and you go, OK. Not adopted. Interesting. What a beautiful day. You hear the birds. So cool. It's just I don't. Know, I think when I come to visit, I'm going to be running into a lot of. Talk a little bit about. Just history. We talk about the Danes. Looking up. The Danish whole time. influence here. Uh, as in the word gate or gatta. So things arrived in uh, 1004. And how did they arrive? Did they turn up and go, hello, anyone fancy a cup of coffee? Mm -hmm. By the way, there we are, Flowers Court over there. Also not adopted. Now we know what that means. Yes. Yeah, so the Danes. 
Did the channel say, go and scrabble company. anybody? I want to go for a little country walk. Uh, no, they ransacked the city and uh, yeah. raised it to the ground. 1004. So you're going to find some Danish words uh, still apply here then. Uh, Tombland, which we'll go and see later. You've probably heard of Tombland. You're expecting it to be full of lots and lots of tombs, aren't you? Uh, well, it's not. Tomb, Tombland. Uh, tomb actually means empty. So I'm in empty land, so it's actually a big space where they used to hold markets. The mischief. Love it. Going over the river again. What a lovely sunny day it is. We're on this beautiful, beautiful bridge called Fire Bridge. It seems so pleasant, so innocent, doesn't it? Uh oh. Of course, you know it isn't, don't you? <laughs> when you're setting it up like that. So, there used to be a wooden bridge here before, but I think this has been here, I don't know, probably the 1500s. But. People used to come here and have fun. So what they used to do is, of course, uh, part of the witch trials in Britain. Uh, people used to be tried here. So this is the site of the ducking stall. What was the ducking stall? You probably know. But if you were accused of witchcraft, and generally that probably means uh, you were a woman, uh, you'd be tied to a stall and you'd be dunked in the water. Now, see if you can follow this logic, if you will. So the logic was water was very pure and it would uh, repel evil. So for the poor women <laughs> that were being dunked, okay, if you survived, if you survived the ducking, what did that mean? Oh, well, actually, you were repelled by the water, which meant you were guilty. What happened then? Well, probably be carted off for <laughs> some other awful uh, treatment. Right. And now, of course, if you weren't repelled by the water and you stayed under... And you drowned. And you, and you died. Oh, well, you were innocent. Yeah. Uh, small consolation, I suppose, is you were dead. Well, that was the warped thinking in those days. Now that bridge is said to be haunted, haunted by a woman who had been found guilty and carted off. Carted off to be burnt at the stake. Whoa. And apparently, uh, you might see her one day dressed in rags. If you do, she might ask you to help her. She might help you to bend down and pick up a bundled kindling. This was the kindling that she had to carry to light her own fire where she was burnt. gate ahead. It's going to take us into Norwich Cathedral. Oh my gosh, look at that. That is so cool. We get away from some of the street noise. Yeah, busy day. Cool. 
Wow. Norwich Cathedral. So like anywhere uh, half pretty in the UK, anything that's uh, a little bit old, it's featured in Harry Potter films. Yeah. Of course it has. It is uh, huge. It's a huge cathedral. It's uh, second largest in this country. Uh, only Salisbury Cathedral is bigger. I actually probably knew that. We just watched a video on Salisbury. You can go in there. You can, uh, the cloisters are particularly nice to have a wander around. But I'm going to take us around this way. To a statue of Nelson. Admiral Nelson. Was he born here? Is that right? So Nelson, we could say, was probably um, Britain's greatest naval commander. And he died in the Battle of uh, Trafalgar. Fighting against the French and the Spanish. Now, was he born in Norwich? Supposedly, his last words maybe to his next in command, were kiss me hardy. I'm not sure if that's true. Kiss me. Maybe he was saying kismet. Hardy kismet isn't feet. Actually, no one's around who was uh, there at the battle, so we don't know. What is interesting, though, is uh, to transport his body back to UK territory, to Gibraltar, he was dumped in a barrel of brandy. Oh. That was to keep him from rotting. I guess it could could have been worse, I guess. Now there is a saying in the Navy. It's called um, sucking the monkey or tapping the Admiral. And rumour goes, goes back to this time, because uh, when the body, body was being shipped back in the barrel of brandy, it's rumoured that some of the sailors drilled a little hole in the flask, or the cask, put a little straw through, and would drink the brandy. Oh, gross. Indeed, perhaps when the body was brought ashore, Gibraltar, all the brandy had disappeared. <laughs> I don't know if that's true. Oh my god, I I've hope also it's heard not. Actually, I hope, it's it. I hope it is. A different variation, by the way, on that story, which was, it was actually a Madeiran wine that was used. Uh, we heard that in Madeira, surprisingly. There's a lovely close to which you can walk around down at the bottom there, have a good wander around there. You can wander around the cloisters. It's one of the biggest cloisters in uh, Britain. We just passed uh, Wellington's statue, the Duke of Wellington. Uh, two times British Prime Minister. He defeated Napoleon at Waterloo and he ended the Napoleonic Wars, which I guess is a good thing for us anyway. And we're walking through Ethelbert Gate right now. So this has a bit of a history. So it's built to replace a church, uh, St. Ethelbert, that was burnt. So what happened in uh, 1272? So this area here, Tombland, remember I mentioned what that meant earlier? Tombland was the site also of an annual fair. Uh, things got a little bit out of hands between monks and the local people. Uh, several citizens got killed. The town's fault didn't really like that that much. <laughs> and so they uh, attacked the monks who hold themselves up. It's beautiful though. The citizens burnt the cathedral and they burnt St. Ethelbert's church. Oh, and you can drive through it? Finally, King Henry III intervened. So come on, boys, chill out. 
you've got to make reparations. Part of the reparations were that the city had to pay for that grand gate to replace the church. Oh, and also they had to take 30 ringleaders and uh, they were all sentenced to death. Mm, Probably in some suitably gruesome manner. Tomb land. Or empty land. It's heard over there. That building over there. So it's the Edith Cavell. Hmm. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. This is going off the top of my head here. But uh, Edith Cavell, was she not famous in the First World War? Was that right? Was she a nurse? British, but she, I believe, treated uh, both sides. Didn't matter what side you were on. You got equal treatment from good old Edith. That's what I think, anyway. I'm sure you good folk can tell me otherwise. Oh, Maid's Head Hotel. I suppose I should point that out too. I think that is the, supposedly the oldest hotel in Norwich. Oh, way over there. Maybe even okay. the country. If it's not the country, I'll, uh, I might scrub that bit out. <laughs> I'm glad you didn't. Now follow me this way. See, uh, there it is, Tombland. Tombland, yeah. says up there. Let's come up here. I mean, I imagine, Mike, uh, we're going to quit here. Um, I imagine no matter where he points the camera, there's some history to talk about. Um, it's just remarkable. The city, of course, what I'm watching through the lens here is amazing. It's, it's I mean, it's, dare I say, beautiful. The architecture, uh, I'm just really digging, and maybe not the greatest watch with me because I'm just kind of taking it all in and listening, getting lost in what he's saying and, and just listening and to the sounds of the street and just marveling at the, uh, just the, the brickwork of most of these buildings and all the different styles. And it's just, of course, the, the church, the cathedral. Yeah. Really cool. I had no idea that Norwich was like this. Um, I, I've heard a lot of people say negative things about Norwich and nothing too bad, but you know, people say, ah, you know, that's, you don't need to go there, that sort of thing. But, it, you know, for someone who doesn't understand, <laughs> you know, old stuff, like you all do it's really i find it fascinating and it looks pretty fun uh, i love the fact that they had so many pubs now granted they've whittled it down to about 150 or so that's okay it still seems like i could find one um but it's just yeah it's pretty pretty awesome um, i'm really loving uh how mike's doing this it's just He's just cruising right along, showing a lot of different things, pointing out a lot of things. Um, so yeah, really, really cool stuff. So thanks, Mike. Appreciate you allowing us to come along. Uh, stick around for part two uh, tomorrow. Um, we'll finish up his uh, walk. Wow, pretty cool stuff, man. Pretty cool. Hey, I want to thank all of you. You guys are truly amazing people for hanging out with me and enjoying this sort of stuff with me, watching me ask probably uh, dumb questions, um, watching me miss certain things that he's talking about. And um, I, again, let me just point out, it's really important that you go and support Mike and all the other uh, creators that we watch. It is uh, Something that you know that I'm trying to do. I used to do this willy-nilly, this reacting. You know, we, we would watch videos and not 
give a shout out or nothing. I, I didn't know. That's just kind of when I first started, I didn't really know how it worked. And after a while, you're just like, gosh, you know, it, it kind of weighed on me for for a while. And, uh, and so I'm really making it a point to ask new uh, creators uh, for their blessing. And of course, I'm slowly but surely going back to ones that we've watched in the past and, and reaching out to them. Some uh, thankfully have come back and said, yes, awesome. Thanks for uh, reaching out. Um, there have been many who have just not responded. So I don't know what to make of that, but um, uh, I, I want to do this the right way. So um, thanks for coming along. Hope everybody's happy, healthy, and safe. Appreciate all of you. And we'll see you in part two, hopefully. Stick around. We'll see you the rest of the city tomorrow. All right. Have a great day, everyone. All right. Bye. Mark from the States. Mark from the States. It's Mark. And he's from